Ladies and gentlemen, after a short break, uh, obviously uh, 7 o'clock uh, that uh, has been planned for this panel has is long gone. Uh, it's time to start it. We'll be talking about sustainable beekeeping and uh, bee um, well-being. Uh, we have our panelists and we will be connecting online with uh, our panelists, uh, remote panelists, uh, so to speak. Uh, so before, uh, so as not to dwell on uh, this introduction too long, let's begin with the problem, with the issue, because this is like the aftermath of the first uh, presentation we had today. So we'd like to follow it up because this is an important topic from the beekeeping point of view. And so the, the well-being of bees, uh, which can be defined as a, a state of physical health in the condition of full harmony of living organisms in the natural environment. Uh, and this pro ensures the, ma the main needs of the insects uh, with food, water, access, space, and shelter from the elements. So, well-being of bees. So, what should be uh, the sustainable beekeeping like in the 21st century? Let's begin with Etienne Bruno, because it's after his presentation that we uh, started this topic. Yeah, it's uh, the, the question is very, uh, it's so many persons, I will be short. I think the, the most important is to to think at the habitat of the bees and to perhaps to be more close to the normal habitat of the bees. So the hive will be modified probably in uh, some, the, the isolation of the hive is more important than in the past, you have a little, we have to take in consideration the frame. This is one thing, and uh, the ventilation of the hive. We have to 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 work more on these topics. This is all the habitat. There we have to rethink and to think what we do. We do a lot of good things, but some things are not so so good. It's a first uh, a first topics. The second topic is the density of the the colony. When you see the nature, the the, the colony are not just closed. Uh, from each uh, one to other, uh, another, they have uh, some distance, 100 meters, 300 meters. How can we combine beekeeping? Because for the beekeeper, it's impossible to run to, to visit this beehive. How can we find a good solution for the bees to avoid the 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 the, 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 the change of the hive? And what, what, the last uh, presentation showed the, the danger of this. Uh, proximity of the hives. So we have to think to, to these things to, to uh, and another a third very important element, it's the alimentation. And there, there it's all the, the food of the bees. We sure that they normally they have to consume pollen and, and, uh, and honey. When we give uh, proteins and this kind of things, it's not the same. And this is a, a very uh, important impact on the, the quality of the immune system of the bee. So the alimentation, the habitat, and the density, and so all the problems, the synergy between the different pollinators. This is the, there are the problems for the future of the beekeeping. So <laughs> I will leave the, the floor to to the other persons. I think. Thank you, Etienne. Teraz poprosimy o wypowiedzenie się pani, pana profesora. Thank you, Etienne. Now we would like to ask Professor Jerzy Bilde to take the floor. O, dziękuję uprzejmie. Mam nadzieję, że mnie słychać, bo miałem jakieś małe kłopoty. OK. Słychać bardzo dobrze. Państwo, no, trzeba powiedzieć... Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is sustainable beekeeping, or I... I wouldn't uh, be talking of uh, this term. We are talking about this is a highly uh, specific 
There are no specific rules because uh, to uh, ensure well-being among bees, uh, we encourage that the uh, bee farms are uh, not too big. I know people uh, who are trying to have uh, not more than eight uh, colonies in one stand, one site. But uh, I know people who have 200 to 300 colonies, and it doesn't mean that they don't cope very well, or, or quite well, these colonies. Uh, uh, Etienne um, was uh, mentioning in his presentation about this uh, traditional beekeeping uh, or uh, the wild uh, state where uh, what the bees had uh, available, what forage they had, uh, that it was uh, almost perfect uh, well-being, but it doesn't make sense uh, to go back to the natural um, beekeeping um, practices. This is that something that we are probably not able, will not be able to go back to really in practice. So the well-being of bees will depend, and, uh, will depend very much on the condition where we are. There are places where you will have, um, um, let's say, 10, uh, there it will be too many colonies if you only have 10 hives, because forages are, uh, are limited, uh, while there are other areas where it is, uh, whose capacity will be greater for colonies. So, and also, and uh, another thing is, what is our standard of well-being? I mean, what's our definition? Uh, and we have this uh, fad, this trend to have um, uh, farms, urban apiaries, and they are quite well, even though they are far from nature. So it depends very much on the actual beekeepers uh, is to define whether in a given area bees are doing well or not. If they are not doing well, they much should be done to change that. Lotta, would you like to speak about it? Lotta says that not necessarily uh, she'd like to add, add, add anything at this was, point. Uh, no, I was interrupted from outside. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> so please go ahead. Okay. W takim razie jeszcze raz, czy chciałabyś coś dodać? Would you like to add something at this point, Dota? W tym temacie? Nie. Dobrze. No zatem poprosimy uh, Okay. Uh, let's move on to Tomasz Wysoń to speak. Ja myślę, że dobrostan pszczół, to jest szeroko. I think well-being um, of bees is a, a broad term. We are trying to um, provide it so that we have uh, the right conditions for bees to grow, to develop on various areas. And we're talking about the health, so that the bees um, have um, medication for varoses, uh, combating varoses. But the main thing is the forage, the foraging base. Uh, that is absolutely key. What uh, my colleague said before, uh, there are apiaries with up to 200 uh, colonies, and the bees are fine, and also urban apiaries, and they're also fine. But there are also monocultures uh, with a lot of um, be uh, what of honey output, but there is no diversity for the bees, and so the well-being um, is something very much about the education. I keep talking about it, so let's promote uh, uh, the um, the various um, plants that are required. 
Um, let me give you an example of uh, Wrocław, the city. Uh, um, we've mapped it, or the, it has mapped it, uh, and there are uh, we are working with the municipality, with farmers, and so on. Um, there are 70 um, percent of uh, uh, publicly owned land in the city, uh, and we can work with them to provide those plant sp species that are um, uh, supportive for uh, for the bees. Um, and if bees have access to their forage, uh, then they are doing well. I mean, we cannot m move backwards too much. Obviously, we can't uh, eschew our smartphones and computers, and we may complain, but this is our future. And so, uh, honey keep uh, beekeeping is changing. We have to, therefore, be flexible and adaptive at a time when there are so many things that change, and especially the climate. Thank you. OK, we can't hear um, our colleagues. Uh, let's move on to Professor Zbigniew Kołtowski. Hmm? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to stress that uh, the uh, forage, the plants, have been mentioned already. On my side, I would like to get into more detail. Um, what I mean is not just the abundance of the plants and the forage, but about its continuity throughout the season, from early spring to late autumn, this uh, big biodiversity of forage plants guarantees the continued delivery of food for bees, and I think this is the key significant, the, the, the key factor for honeybees, but also feral bees. So, if we are talking about the well-being, it is worth looking at the level of bees, at the, at the number of colonies per square kilometer. Where we have much more bee colonies, we have to have a much more dense and abundant forage plant uh, number, where we have less bee colonies than the forage plants can be a bit less abundant. Still, we always have a situation where the more forage, the more, the more plants, the better conditions for the life of uh, insects and the better conditions for beekeeping. And the productivity, the yield is also important for us. Thank you. I guess uh, this was the small one aspect I wanted to turn your attention to. Thank you very much, Professor, for this very interesting comment. I received uh, information from the other side of the comment that we look very, very sad, so please smile and please answer smiles. Now, Roberto, over to you. A lot of things was already said, so I will just try to summarize some things. Uh, I think the sustainable uh, beekeeping uh, for 21st uh, century uh, must uh, adopt uh, to four pillars. First, this um, environment, including uh, promoting biodiversity and uh, uh, the agricultural systems which are friendly to bees. The secondly uh, must be improved uh, genetics, uh, probably uh, including the use of uh, local uh, ecotypes of uh, honeybees. And uh, for third, uh, I think uh, some beekeeping practices uh, must be uh, changed, including uh, already discuss uh, overcrowding of some areas uh, with uh, uh, with uh, colonies, and I think uh, there is also need for better education and extension service uh, because yeah, the situation sometimes changed more rapidly than the beekeepers change their. Uh, uh, work and activities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robert. I do agree that education is key so that our bees are happier. Now I'd like to ask Professor Magorzata Binkowska. 
Thank you very much uh, for giving me the floor. I wanted to mention the subtypes of bees that we introduced our apiaries. In the recent years, we have uh, seen a big uncontrolled import of queens coming from regions other than our own countries. And then we are faced with problems that we have bees not adapted to our local environment, our local conditions, and such illegal import of uh, foreign subtypes or subspecies. For instance, in Poland, a lot of queens have been imported from the Iberian Peninsula or Africa. This results in danger, in risk for our bees, because we can then witness uh, diseases or problems in our bees that they cannot cope with. And the virosis is actually an example of a problem that got disseminated worldwide as a result of this free trade, overly free trade. So education, education and focusing on not buying queens from unknown resources. We have great breeders in our own country that do breed very good material adapted to the local conditions. So focus on local material and do not trust different ads and uh, commercials, advertisements promoting the import of queens from abroad. This is the risk of the import for the imported bees and for local bees. That's very important, I think. Thank you very much, Professor. Let's continue smiling. Now I'd like to add my three cents worth, because the beekeepers frequently say that there's no drugs for viruses, so they want more drugs. I believe that the well-being of bees, their welfare, will not be as high as you want them to be if we continue adding more and more chemical substances to the colony, not to mention the effect on the end product that is the honey and the health of the end consumer. So our general well-being will depend on whether we will reduce the chemical substances provided to bees. Thank you. I would like to add one more sentence because I have been thinking about one thing. If we introduce certain different weird sometimes idea into our own apiaries, results in different problems that we are faced with. Some people have an idea, no one knows where from, and they are trying to introduce certain ideas into the apiary instead of applying common sense, trying to first observe what is the life of uh, natural feral bees in nature before we try to introduce some artificial external ideas to the apiaries. Thank you very much. I think we can move on smoothly to the next question, because it's asking for it. Can we say that sustainable beekeeping... Hang on. Something? Okay. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, I thought I interrupted someone before, so that's why I said you should continue because I was disturbed from outside. I'm sorry for that. I just want to add one thing to the discussion. Uh, I would just say I really think that we as beekeepers we ha have to uh, kind of interact with the honeybees um, in such a way that we learn how to understand them better, and we have to be very humble that we don't know many things about what is actually well-being of honeybees. So I think we have a lot of um, more research and also more understanding about the natural life of honeybees to be done in relation to beekeeping, because as soon as we are kind of interfering or working with the bees, we are doing beekeeping. So I just want to add that it will probably be much higher demand of knowledge and uh, an increased capacity of the beekeeping uh, skills uh, in the future. And also that the landscape, and you have already discussed this, um, a lot of you have already mentioned that the landscape is very important. And we as beekeepers actually decide where to uh, open up an apiary, where to put the bees and place them in the environment. And we have to be very, as beekeepers, very much aware of what is going on in the surrounding and how the actual situation, for example, for floral uh, resources are there. And as you also mentioned, the 
what when we are buying or when we are producing more bee colonies, we really need to be uh, very thoughtful about what kind of bees are we dealing with? Are they the most suitable one for this area? So I totally agree about the fact that we should be very careful with the diversity in the genome that we have with the bees so that we breed for resistance and resilience in honeybees themselves. But of course, also promote that we have a resilient landscape surrounding them. Thank you. Thank you very much for this beautiful summary. Let's move on to the last question, because we are running very, very short of time and everyone must be very tired. Can we say that sustainable beekeeping is a compromise between the world of insects and fulfilling human needs? Etienne, would you like to say a few words about that? I didn't understand clearly your question. It's the... Can you repeat it, please? <laughs> Of course. So can we say that sustainable beekeeping is a compromise between the world of insects and fulfilling the needs of humans? Yeah, yes, I understand the question, but it's so difficult to... Uh, yes, I think it's... I will not answer directly to your question, but um, what Lotta tell it's it's completely true. We have to change the. Well, we have to. Which we have to change, and it's compromised. To it's a problem that we are fixed. We we think that we know the bees. We don't know really the bees. The bees are more complex than what what we are thinking, and um, I think we have to to be very humble in front of the the bee colony and to. As human, we are not the the king of the world, if I can tell. And uh, sustainable beekeeping will be if we understand clearly the, the topics for the future and if we understand what needs really the bees. So it's a, a, the society has to, to change. We are talking of farmers and what they are doing and they use pesticides and we use also pesticides in our beehive. We have to stop this and to try to find other solution. We have to inc to improve the, the environment, the, the landscape for the bee and for all the pollinators. So we have to change our society somewhere and to, to think, yes, we can produce and we can continue to have some economic return if we respect the nature and if we copy and we pick up some elements in the nature who, who can help us to survive. It's our survival with in, in, uh, in consideration in this uh, in this uh, subject, I think. If bees will survive, we will survive too. Thank you very much, Etienne, for this very extensive uh, answer. I wanted to mention this as well, so I don't have to comment now. I do agree with you completely. I think Professor Jerzy Wilde would like to say a few words about that as well. Well, what, I, what can I say? I agree with the previous speakers. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is the case. Sustainable beekeeping means a certain compromise between the bees and the expectations of beekeepers or consumers. And this has to happen. We have to understand that a too drastic approach to the yield and profitability of beekeeping is incorrect because uh, if we are too extreme in uh, approach to profitability, we cannot have sustainable beekeep beekeeping. And the other way around, if we are doing everything to breed varroa-resistant varo bees, that was, for instance, initiated uh, by Professor V on uh, Gotland. It's, well, it, we cannot really call it sustainable beekeeping. These bees were barely managing, they were barely making it. The colonies were very weak. They were not able to produce in order, in order, in order to maintain them. They had to be fed additionally, and they 
the, any production was impossible. Any honey yield was impossible. Yes, we are trying to breed varroa resistant bees for 40 years now. And we're still failing. However, I do agree with Etienne that we have to keep trying. We have to change something in our approach to achieve it. And we have to take small steps in this direction. Because we live for the bees, but also we live only because the bees are delivering us certain goods, are granting us certain benefits, so that has to be sustainable and balanced out in our expectations. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. It was very precious what you said, that we have to change something. Actually, there's this saying that it is uh, madness to keep repeating the same thing and expecting different results. So I totally agree with you. Now, I would like to ask Professor Zbigniew Kołtowski to take the floor. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like uh, to mention one thing. Namely, if we're talking about the compromise between the life of the bees and the expectations of humans, of people, we have to be aware that bees are predominantly pollination. And beekeeping is also a very important agriculture branch. In agriculture, we intensify everything in order to obtain more and more yield, better and better crops, and so on. And actually, bees, insects, pollinators can help us, including honeybee. And uh, with this intensification, we have to look at pollinators. We have to make sure we do not harm pollinators. We have to make sure that whatever we do in agriculture, of course, I think of pe pesticides, we have to make sure that they do not harm the pollinators. And that's the importance of the compromise. On one hand, we want to intensify farming, but also we want to have a healthy environment, healthy bees that do the free ecosystem service, which is pollinating. So I believe that this is an extra aspect of this compromise. Thank you very much, Professor, but, uh, because you're a beekeeper and a researcher in one. I'd like to uh, hear what you think. So I'm, I'm thinking that we really need to collaborate. That's the first thing. As a beekeeper, um, I can see that I am, I, I would say beekeepers, if I look in general, we are very important to kind of build the glue maybe between other actors within the landscape so that we can uh, help together and collaborate and coordinate things so that we have a better landscape and better situation for, for the honeybees and also for beekeeping, of course. So it's, it's nothing that we can solve ourselves uh, as beekeepers. We actually have to collaborate much more and interact with the actors in the surrounding areas where we do keep our bees. Thank you very much for this comment. Tomek, how about you? I'm sure you're more than happy to talk. Yeah, Tomek is me, I guess. Listen, everyone. Bees and beekeepers. These are two worlds and two different subjects. The professional beekeeper and the amateur hobby beekeeper, while the hobby beekeeper uh, is not focused on the yield. That's one aspect. And actually, this duo works very well because the yield, um, the focus on the yield on productivity does not exclude common sense in running the apiary. Once uh, we talk about professional beekeeping, where this is our profession, so we have to maintain ourselves and our families from the bees, so we have to focus on financial results because we have families, we have to function them, we have to maintain the family and function somehow, and bring our children and so on. So we have to have this harmony. The 
um, the financial aspect cannot be more important than the well-being of bees, of the colonies, because if we focus only on money, on how much money we can squeeze out of the bees, this will uh, overshadow the rational approach to beekeeping. So this is the key. We have to understand that, just like in business, the benefit, the yield, the productivity is very important for every company, but once this becomes a most important factor and it overshadows the common sense, common sense approach to uh, human resource management or business goals, then we start making mistakes. The same is the case for beekeeping. I'm not a professional beekeeper, but I tend to compare this to any action in the Beekeeping business, if someone maintains their families based on that, they have to put the financial aspect on the side. Of course, it is important, it has to be there, because this is how we maintain our families, but we have to look at the bees, because this, so this duo has to work. It's like a bike, we have to keep pushing, pedaling towards one direction. Bees and the beekeeper, thank you. Thank you, Tomek, for this comment. Can I add one more sentence, please, if I may? Because Tomek focused on the professional beekeepers, but I would like to say that uh, among 82,000 beekeepers in Poland, we only have 500, maybe 1,000, well, maximum 2,000 professional beekeepers. So the foundation for my optimism regarding the future of beekeeping is vested in the ones who are the majority. They constitute 98-99% of our beekeepers and I believe that it is them who will show us what sustainable beekeeping should be like. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for this uh, valuable uh, comment. And uh, we're moving on to Piotr Mędrzycki. Let's hope his internet connection is working better. Uh, yes, let's hope. Uh, I can say a few words before I'm kicked out of this connection. Okay, I subscribe with both my hands of what everybody else was saying. Just very briefly, uh, I'd like to maybe uh, add a comment. Um, I don't want to talk about the compromise, really, because a compromise is available for development when there are two counter interests while right now as one of the speakers mentioned before our survival on the planet uh, really largely depends on the bees talking about honeybees and uh, uh, the the whole family and so our interest and their interest are going hand in hand or hand in wing, so to speak. Um, so perhaps let's just think not in terms of compromise. What, when I'm talking us, we, I'm talking about humankind, I'm talking about uh, our species, uh, species rather, uh, rather than, let's say, just the beekeepers. Thank you, Piotr. Professor Bienikowska is both the beekeeper and the researchers. I'm sure that he, she has something to do to add. Really, I have nothing to add because uh, the previous speakers said everything that could have been said. Um, so I again subscribe um, under all those statements because my opinion is, is exactly the same. Robert? Okay, thank you, just, uh, just a shortly. Uh, coexistence between the, uh, between the uh, bees and uh, uh, humans is always about searching the equilibrium. Uh, many of you uh, surely read the Tom Seeley's postulates about Darwinian uh, beekeeping. Um, just the two, two examples that the wild colonies are uh, living in smaller hives and uh, swarm more frequently, but they have much less problems with uh, pests and diseases. Yeah? Uh, so 
also also human and modern beekeeping uh, probably needs to uh, learn more uh, from these uh, wild colonies but surely there is a uh, there, there is a place also for commercial bee uh, beekeeping because uh, i i have read that uh, the 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 crops which are dependent on the insect pollination the the need for pollination has raised uh, by 300 uh, percent by the last uh, five decades so yeah if the if the human uh, yeah would like to survive surely there is a place for for all pollinators not only the managed pollinator but, uh, but also the wild pollinators but it needs yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, efforts to uh, to save uh, the, the, these uh, populations. Thank you. Thank you for this valuable um, comment. Uh, let me add uh, chip in with something on my side. Mm. Our lot, our plight depends on the, the bees, so our well-being depends very much on the well-being of the bees. So we, as uh, beekeepers, have to um, maybe take some uh, stringent measures. Uh, we need to obviously work hard because it's the hygiene monitoring and so on but and there's a lot of work but if we don't do this um, this is going to come back and bite us because if bees uh, don't feel well we are going to feel bad uh, both, uh, as well um, I'm also thinking whether we haven't really gone too far in um, improving nature uh, at all cost in agriculture and elsewhere. Uh, perhaps this is the time today, now, uh, for um, some sort of um, uh, a look at, at our methods, whether it's a compromise or not, because some methods are not really working and are creating problems. Thank you.